All right. Can uh, everybody see the uh, the first slide? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, so welcome to our open source support briefing. Um, we uh, perform these briefings every quarter and we talk about uh, various topics, uh, specifically um, how we use uh, sustain engineering and uh, um, the impact on uh, you portal and the community. So for uh, today's uh, briefing, we're going to cover a couple of topics. Uh, we'll go over our U portal accessibility. Um, many of you know that we had an audit uh, last year, and then we uh, went forward with some work on accessibility and improving the U portal with regards to it. Um, we'll also talk about uh, U portal master versus the four three uh, patches. Just touch on the kind of the considerations on where you should be providing commits and adopting branches as the basis for any future deployments in the near future. Um, third, we'll talk about uh, the efforts we've done um, under sustained engineering, kind of list the uh, JIRAs and get, go over them um, in topical format. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and talk about uh, UW Madison's AngularJS portal. Uh, last quarter, um, our briefing was kind of split up. So I wanted to uh, touch on that one more time so that there's a little more consistent uh, message going forward with that. Um, in the future, we're hoping to continue talking about new technologies, or interesting approaches. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to in, in, uh, continuing with this section. Um, and then we'll also uh, just touch on the conference that's upcoming um, this summer in Philadelphia, and then talk about um, our plans for this coming quarter. So with that, we'll talk about the uh, update on new portal accessibility. Uh, Christian Murphy will take over. Thanks, Benito. Um, hi, I'm Christian Murphy over at Unicon. Um, for our accessibility audit, um, we wanted to um, go into um, setting our goal as hitting WCAG 2.0 AA standard. Um, and as part of our audit, we spent about 40 hours um, just going through all of the views, all of the code through you portal, and um, identifying issues where we were falling a bit short of that standard. Um, and then this slide highlights um, those areas that we kind of um, found as the main issues. Um, we had some contrast issues. Um, some of the images didn't have proper alternative text. Um, some inputs were missing um, submit fields, which made them hard for um, blind users to use. Um, there was some missing markup, so it was difficult to understand what some of the form fields were intending to do. And um, there were some broken links um, in uPortal that were also um, causing issues with screen readers. Um, and as part of the um, audit, we then spent um, about 120 hours um, going through each of these issues and um, remediating them. Um, so Benito, if you want to jump to the next slide. Thanks much. Um, so um, this is just starting to summarize um, our efforts here. Um, we've gone through, again, this, it's the same um, breakdown as we had in the previous slide, um, a lot of um, inputs was kind of the largest effort here. Um, many of the inputs in your portal didn't describe what they were actually um, supposed to be having inputted there. And um, next slide again, Benito. And um, kind of going down this list, um, all of these are um, just the issues that we went through. And um, if you wanna check out um, the pull request, feel free to. Um, there's more information in there. Um, and all of these have been resolved. Um, they're merged in, and they will be um, part of both the next U Portal um, five release and the next U Portal um, four three release. Um, next slide, Benita. Thanks much. Um, so there are a couple issues um, that we haven't had the opportunity to get with. Um, late breaking news: um, group search um, was broken um, a little bit ago. We've resolved that issue. Um, that should actually be good to go now. Um, there are still a couple links in U Portal that have been customized and don't have um, quite sufficient contrast. 
um, we'll be digging into that and getting that resolved in the near future. Um, one more slide. Perfect. Um, so where will these um, different um, features be available? Um, we're planning on getting this into U Portal 432, um, which we're currently targeting um, tentatively for sometime in late February. Um, and we're also targeting to have these changes into the U Portal 5 release, um, which will be sometime probably around mid-year um, near the Open Aperio conference. Um, another great outcome from this accessibility audit is we have hit a lot of compliance um, with different federal standards. In the United States, um, WCAG 2 gives us compliance with Section um, 504, Section 508, and the ADA guidelines. Um, so we're pretty well covered there. Um, also, we have checked into a couple international standards. Um, we are now compliant with the RGAA standard in France, um, the 2016 version, as well as in Canada, the AODA standard. Um, we are actually compliant all the way out until the 2020 version of that standard, so we should be good to go there as well. Um, another thing I want to emphasize about the accessibility audit we did is it's not just about disabled users. Um, a lot of the changes that were made um, are general improvements to the user experience, and um, it just helps guide users towards their intended outcome in software. Um, so uPortal overall should be becoming a better experience. Um, another thing I want to mention is that um, while we have gone through this remediation process, um, keeping up the accessibility in uPortal will be an ongoing process. Um, we're going to have to maintain that AA level um, going forward, as well as um, be looking into a little bit of how we can move it even closer to the AAA standard of accessibility in uPortal. And uh, yeah, that is our accessibility audit. Um, do we have any questions around that? And again, please feel free to chime in via chat. Um, we can ask you questions now, or you can hold them till the end of our presentation. Um, I, I think the Unicon team feels that this is such a huge win and such a great value for you, Portal, that um, we're really proud of our efforts um, over the last quarter, quarter and then some, because we actually started the audit in the previous quarter in quarter three, and we really feel like this is a great value to everyone that uses you Portal. And for those who are potentially looking for a portal that has or that currently meets the compliance standards that we've outlined here. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. All right. <clears throat> So I just wanted to touch on uPortal Master versus the 4.3x uh, patches branch. Um, there were some email exchanges or at least some conversations in pull request comments about the distinction and uh, relevant uses. And also it's a, a good time to point out if you're starting a new deployment, which branch uh, you may want to base that deployment off of. Um, so one of the things we've done is we've uh, started adopting semantic versioning and to summarize it uh, really the, you know, you, we have uh, three parts to the version number a major minor and patch um, kind of with these definitions um, the major is uh, huge changes um, that uh, make things incompatible uh, with with previous versions a uh, minor uh, change would be things that um, <clears throat> are backwards compatible, but they're enhancements and improvements. So this is uh, something that you would, uh, you may adopt a, a major version of uh, an application that follows semantic versioning, and the minor update should not break um, your application as you move forward with those. But if you're really cautious, you can just focus on patches, and that's number three, which is backwards compatible bug fixes. And it really should be minimized to things that improve the product at a specific uh, major minor version. 
Um, there's more details at semver.org if you want to read up on semantic versioning. Um, it, it's, there's quite a bit there, but it's easy to grasp the high-level picture. Uh, the, the website really more focuses on some of the, some of the subtle decisions um, and details with this. So with 4.3x patches, um, we're really looking at uh, the smallest amount of change for the 4.3 line. And what we want to see uh, committed in, in this branch are really minimized bug fixes. If something really is broken in your portal 4.3, yes, we, we, we would uh, want to correct it um, in, in 4.3x patches. Uh, if there's a new feature or something interesting, um, that generally doesn't go along with with a patch release, um, so that's something that uh, we would be hesitant to move into the patches branches. There's some gray areas there, such as um, accessibility. Some may argue that it's not a bug, but um, it is a, a deficit in U Portal, and so we we kind of made that decision to go ahead and roll accessibility uh, uh, pull request into the 4.3x uh, patch branch. Um, so what's what's the deal with master? Um, master is not broken. I know a lot of open source projects will have a lot of experimental activity in the master branch. Um, we generally keep it uh, such that it builds and works uh, properly, um, but it's also open to a lot of volatility. So in master, you'll see uh, a lot of uh, pull requests and activity and things will change and there's there's not general a regard for backwards compatibility, um, although we certainly don't break backwards compatibility uh, without careful consideration. Uh, the, the main changes, and Drew will get into this as we talk about our future plans uh, for uh, Q1 of this year, is um, the uPortal 5 targets. Um, a part of those changes include uh, moving packages around from org JSIG to org Aperio. And this is probably the main source of incompatibility. Um, I just ran into this on a project yesterday where a class, we had to pull in a class, but it was expecting and using org JSIG packages. So it needed to be changed. It was a minor change, but it, it was not compatible. Um, the other major change that's happening in master uh, versus 4.3 and, and before is ant and maven tooling is being replaced uh, uh, with Gradle. Um, so some of your, if you have customizations with tooling, that uh, may go away and that may cause some issues. Also, depending on your build production, UAT, and other environments, um, having a, a change in tooling uh, may slow you down. You'll have to coordinate with your operations or Unix team uh, with regards to uh, up upgrading to master. So the big question really is, um, okay, so what do we do with minor improvements between now and new Portal 5? And, and really, um, what we'd like to say or what we suggest is uh, put it in master and we're working hard for a Portal 5 release. Again, it's, it's um, we're expecting Portal 5 to be as uh, solid as any other Portal release. Um, there's a lot of changes, uh, but we're being careful, and a lot of them are uh, in infrastructure changes. Um, uh, so put them in, in master, and um, let's have a discussion if it really needs to go into uh, a 4.3x release. Uh, but, but we're in a, an open community, and we have our mailing list, so, you know, uh, get the conversation going. And with that, uh, are, are there any questions? Uh, so Mark's asking, is there an expectation, uh, expected timeline for transition to Gradle? Uh, I believe the, the plan is to have it switched over for uPortal 5, um, and, and Drew can talk uh, specifically to that, and that would put it in the neighborhood of middle of this year around the Open Aperio Conference. Uh, yeah, I'm just catching up with, um, I am catching up with the comments. Uh, yes, Bruce uh, from Kansas, this is exactly the uh, concern, exactly the, the point or the thing that we have to monitor. 
at at this stage, we are not uh, anticipating a a four four. We are anticipating a U portal four three. Uh, that U portal four three will be the last U portal four, and that U portal five uh, will follow that. Uh, in the semantic versioning approach. Uh, means that we will we will be absolutely maintaining uh, U Portal Four, but we'll be maintaining it by fixing uh, bugs. You know, by maintaining the features that already exist in U Portal Three, and all new things, uh, things newer than U Portal Four Three, they would go into U Portal Five. So you're right; that's exactly the point. Now, I guess I could mention, though, that uh, sometimes when you get down to it, the line between what is a um, what is a new feature and what is a fix uh, can be a little blurry if you stare at it long enough. Uh, you'll, you know, we just got done telling you that we put the accessibility fixes into 4.3, uh, and you know there were some changes to some interfaces there. I don't, I don't think there were really any changes to APIs or certainly nothing that wasn't backwards compatible, but we considered the ex accessibility enhancements to be a, a fix. We, you know, when we looked at that, we viewed it as a fix, uh, in part because that's a reasonable way to interpret it, and also in part because we didn't want to be limited to rolling those fixes out only in U Portal 5 environments. And we could, you know, as a community, we could uh, take a similar position about something else that comes up down the road. Uh, but we are, you know, at a high level, in a general way, uh, we, we've adopted the semantic versioning strategy because it's, uh, it's popular, it's well understood, it's easy to uh, describe, it's well documented. Let me try and read a few more of these. Uh, okay. It looks like we're sort of caught up. Uh, so, Benito, will you advance the next slide? Sure. Uh, just one last thing on this uh, this section, and that is, if you're currently looking at um, doing a U portal deployment, and uh, you feel your organization may not be very agile to adopt new tooling and an another uh, upgrade later in the year. Um, you, you may consider the 4.3 releases branch, um, but we really suggest, uh, you know, if you can wait for the 5, U Portal 5, uh, we're really excited about that and hoping um, that would that will have uh, long legs. So, okay, moving on to the next slide. Uh, and, and, okay, so you gave a parting shot. I'll give a parting shot for that section as well. Uh, as far as the Gradle question, I think the... Uh, the master branch uh, will be building off of, you know, the, the Java technology will be building off of Gradle, I would say probably by about the end of February, uh, so very quickly. Uh, but we may, we may have a period of time, it may even be a long period of time, where uh, the, the processes through which you add your configuration, your skin, uh, and your data to the portal. Those may uh, continue to be based in in the current tools that they're in for a while. Uh, we are. I can talk about this. You know, the next section sort of covers it, and I'll kind of, I guess, jump the gun. Uh, but we are. We're looking at uh, refactoring. Uh, kind of refocusing what's in the main report, uh, uPortal repo. Uh, we expect that with uPortal 5, uh, most folks, majority, probably a vast majority, will run uPortal technology, uh, uPortal Java bytecode that was built by the community, built by Aperio and pushed to Maven Central. Uh, it will probably not be a requirement uh, to build all of you portal sources uh, on each web server. Uh, it, it's not exactly a requirement as it is, but it is a, a typical pattern. It's sort of the default pattern. 
Uh, that will probably not be the case with uPortal 5. uPortal 5, you will need to, be, uh, to build to assemble your own uh, deployment package that includes your skin and your configuration, but that process will probably involve pulling uh, binaries, uPortal binaries from Maven Central uh, that have been built by the community. All right, let me look here. I wish uPortal 5 was going to fully support Spring Framework 4. Uh, if we can find an opportunity to, to work more on Spring 4 uh, in the time, you know, that we have, uh, I, that would be a high priority for me. We have tried twice uh, to update the framework, and the uPortal code has it's maybe just a little bit into the internals of Spring uh, too much, uh, and we we haven't really been successful uh, updating the framework yet. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to dig in and, and and make that happen, no matter what it takes. Uh, and we are we would love it if that could be a part of the 5.0 release. But if we have everything else ready uh, for a timely uh, you portal five in conjunction roughly with open Aperio that I would say will probably I would lean toward going ahead I mean it really we can we'll put it up for a vote we'll talk to other people we'll take every viewpoint but I think we need to, to have a you portal five even if it doesn't include everything we might like all right yeah I uh, specifically with the um, spring four and and you and portal issue uh, there was uh, some changes, a very low level in Spring Framework that um, breaks a, a major um, assumption that uPortal leverages. Uh, it's a very subtle change, but it, it has high impact to us uh, to the point where we may have to have customized classes, um, customized uh, versions uh, of Spring Framework for at least parts of it, a class or two. Um, so that's probably the next effort is to, to see what, what's the minimum uh, change that's needed uh, with, with regards to existing spring classes. Uh, but anyway, uh, Drew, I moved the uh, uPortal 5 slides to uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, did, you, did you move all of them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see that. Well, you know, it's uh, more fun shooting at a moving target. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right, so now we'll talk about the current community release uh, updates that uh, we've performed under Sustain Engineering. Uh, and with that, I will uh, hand uh, things over to Andy. Uh, my name um, Andrew Lasek. On the Unicon team, I'm just going to quickly go over uh, some of the community, uh, current community release updates. Um, Again, most most of the stuff uh, was uh, focused on the sustaining engineering work, work was focused on the YTAG two level double eight and a few other accessibility efforts. Um, there's one important Jira you should be aware of. Um, UP forty seven twelve addressed a bug that was found by University of Kansas. Uh, event aggravation and some other related stat reports were not honoring ancestry groups. Um, this has been corrected and merged in. Uh, Rel 4.3 patches in uh, October of last year. Next slide. Okay, so, okay, so the, focusing on the screw related aspects, um, UP 47.37 uh, addressed the issue that uh, plagued um, most uh, websites. Open redirect when a web page is uh, being redirected to another URL, another domain via user-controlled input. Um, the login URL has a redirect parameter now. It's checked against the portal's domain. Uh, UP 4743 adds HTTP only for uh, greater cookie security. This prevents client-side scripts from accessing the cookie. And WPP 101 disables simplistic caching that was causing some configurations of web proxy portlet to share our details across multiple users. Uh, this is correct in version 2.2. 2.2.2, and thanks uh, Andrew Pito for addressing this issue. Next slide. 
So what's in progress is uh, GT4748 is uh, SLint is a static analysis, analysis and style checking tool for JavaScript. And 4786, this the latest version of CAS does not support uh, old clear cache approach. Thanks to uh, California State University, Sacramento, a new approach is being in the, integrated. And next slide. Okay, so uh, we're here are just a few other jurors that our team has uh, spent engage, engaging with other community members. Um, we currently handle most of the review and merging of proof requests to the portal related topics. And that is it. Any questions? Cool, thanks, Andy. Yep. Um, let's see, uh, moving over to uh, UW Manus and Angular JS portal. So I, we kind of want to just throw in a section uh, talking about interesting technologies uh, with regards to U portal and uh, its ecosystem. Uh, I know we've kind of talked about this uh, before. I wanted to just uh, quickly re review since uh, the last briefing was a little uh, um, off and we kind of ended up splitting it twice. Um, unfortunately, UW Madison wasn't able to uh, attend this presentation, um, but I think uh, twice is enough. So I'll just go through kind of the quick highlights. If you're unfamiliar with um, with UW Madison's Angular Jazz portal, they've uh, essentially created a, a lightweight front end written in Angular JS that sits in front of U Portal. It's it's almost meant to for me, kind of in review. Um, it's like a advanced uh, landing page for the, their users to see a preset um, selection of, of tiles or cards that point to uh, some popular portlets and they can click on those and jump right back into U portal and uh, the full uh, implementation of those portlets. Um, their latest release is six. They, they have a uh, very active development going on. Uh, at the beginning of 2016, they had release 4.2 out. There was a 4.1 um, that uh, preceded it uh, at the previous year, um, but they kind of just jumped right into 4.2. There was no 4.0 release. 5.0 came in the middle of the year and they just released 6.0 in December. So it's very active. Uh, backwards compatibility is, is certainly an issue at this early point in its stage. Their project is going into a perio incubation. Um, so hopefully uh, it'll stabilize here um, in, in this coming year. Um, really one of the focus besides a nice landing page is the ability to engage uh, developers to have expertise less so in Java and more so in uh, front end technologies. Uh, so it, it allows uh, contributions uh, from other units. Say you're at a university where you have developers in the library or um, admissions. Uh, the, they, they can have developers with different skill sets. They don't require Java development and they'll be able to participate in the development of uh, this front end. It does leverage uh, uPortal APIs for most of its functionality. Um, so yeah, all that work on your portal APIs is really uh, comes to bear and is a huge benefit. And while they engaged in this project, UW Madison, they did contribute to the APIs uh, quite a bit. Um, one question we heard last uh, briefing was uh, whether they were going to adopt Angular JS 2.0 in a short time frame. And at that point, they said uh, mid to late 2017. Um, so it really is a, a card or tile motif, uh, very small um, uh, divs that display uh, the title and allow you to click back into U portal. Um, they, they are, they've designed it so that those cards are extensible. And so some of them have been enhanced such as an RSS tile, which will show some of the RSS entries right on, on the tile. I don't have any good examples of any extended cards but I just wanted to show you kind of what a front end looks like. 
here's one with Sinclair that we've been working with Sinclair on um, their new portal release that will be coming soon, and it's based on the Angular JS portal from UW Madison. Um, so right now it's just it's still a work in progress. So you see a couple little icons. Um, they did have some uh, tiles with details, but I don't have access to the backend systems. Uh, but but essentially. Uh, they've added some color coordination and, and um, tabs for that match up with the uPortal uh, layout. Again, uh, leveraging uPortal's API. Um, let's see, was there something else about that? No, uh, um, any questions on that? Great, um, so moving on to Open Aperio. Uh, so again, Open Aperio 2017 uh, will be at the Sheraton Philadelphia Society uh, Hill Hotel in Pennsylvania. Uh, was it the first week of June? Hope to see a lot of you out there. It's a really great time. Um, one of my favorite parts, besides hanging out and having a beer with you all and get to know uh, you better and, and your institutions, um, we do do a lot of uh, brainstorming. It's a great time to talk about uh, where your portal is, its current issues, and what we see um, as its future. Uh, so, so please consider attending. Um, it's just great to engage with all of you. Uh, this, this project really is driven by community, and this is one of our um, best events to, to get together and, and share. Um, Drew? Thanks. Oh, yeah, this is my part also. Uh, <laughs> all right. So one I, one thing that's being offered at the next Open Imperio, uh, something new that is available is a, a half-day soffit workshop, uh, which I I haven't looked at a schedule, but I expect uh, will be will be placed on Sunday, uh, either morning or afternoon before the conference. Uh, I hope that most of you have heard uh, the term soffit already. Uh, I will nevertheless uh, speak briefly about what that is. Uh, as, you're, as you're well aware, as you're all aware, uh, uPortal is a uh, Java portlet compliant uh, container. Uh, uPortal 4 supports JSR 286. Previous to uPortal 4, we supported only JSR 168. Uh, those are the two versions, uh, version 2 and version 1, respectively, of the Java portlet specification. uPortal 5 will continue to support JSR 286, uh, but uPortal 5, in addition, will support a new kind of pluggable content. Uh, so far, we're calling these soffits, uh, despite uh, some um, mumbling on the part of, uh, of Mr. Petro who might like to rename it. We haven't come up with, <laughs> with anything better. Uh, not yet, I don't know, cephalopod was, was kind of a cute idea, but um, at any rate, uh, so far we're still calling it soffits. It's a new kind of content. It's very different from portlets. Um, the problem with portlets, there, there are several. Uh, I could really get into it and I don't want to spend the next hour and a half talking about it, but uh, the, the Portlet 2.0 specification, the one we support, it was uh, released in 2008. So it was worked on in the you know, period of several quarters previous to its release in 2008. It, it doesn't very much reflect the way we like to build things in 2017. Uh, it, it, it really reflects uh, kind of a bygone era of web, of web development when you look at it. And that can be okay. We, we actually had been, we, we've gotten quite sophisticated and quite good at ignoring large parts of the uh, Portlet API and the specification and just kind of working around it and using other things like JavaScript and, and you know, modern CSS. Uh, and, and REST APIs, we've uh, gotten very good at that, but um, at a certain point, we, you know, we kind of reached a tipping point 
where we felt, you know, why do we continue to do this? We need something newer that's more attractive. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of us, you know, myself, uh, the folks at Oakland, and especially I would say the folks uh, working on the uh, CCC, California Community Colleges, um, you know, massive multi-tenant portal that they are putting together, uh, put our heads together and tried to describe what a modern uh, standard for, you know, embedded, um, you know, pluggable content in a portal might look like. It's HTTP based. Uh, the uh, components, the sockets themselves, they don't run in the same JVM or the same Tomcat as the portal, uh, or they don't have to, they actually can. Uh, but typically they run independently. There is a, an HTTP based uh, connection between the portal and the remote content, they don't have to be written in Java. They can really be written in anything. Uh, the integration is very lightweight. We have a, an expectation that uh, pluggable components in the portal these days, uh, primarily they, they, um, they render mostly static uh, DOM elements, and then if they have dynamic content, they use JavaScript and REST APIs to fill those uh, you know, to fill those DOM elements. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a mouthful. There's a lot going on. Uh, and the folks at Oakland and myself and the others who are working on this would really love to have more people knowledgeable about working with this technology and building components using this strategy, using this approach. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're willing, to come to a workshop at Open Aperio on, uh, you know, it's sort of a, a nearly hands-on, I mean, they're pretty brief, they're three hours, so there's not a lot of time for exercises, but the, the next thing to hands-on uh, workshop on Soffit development for uPortal 5, uh, which will be, uh, you know, provided there, there's interest, we will hold it at um, Open Aperio. Uh, any questions on that? Anything you expected me to say, Benito, that I didn't? No, I think you hit all the highlights. Excellent. Hey, Drew, if people are interested, how do they communicate that interest? Well, you, you sign up for the workshops when you register for Open Aperio. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a part of the same process. Okay. David, did we answer your question? Yeah, it, this one will be at Open Aperio. Uh, thank you for asking, though. I'm happy to tell everyone, you know, on the line and anyone else who's willing to hear it, that I'd be uh, perfectly delighted to give this workshop uh, again or even before Open Aperio in, at another venue. Uh, I'm completely happy to do that. Drew, this is Stephen again. Are the conferences recorded for people to view at a later date? Or the workshops I don't, specifically? I don't believe the workshops are recorded. The workshops are paid. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the participants who, uh, you know, sign up for the workshop, they, uh, they see the workshop. You know what? We do publish the slides, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so moving on to uh, our, our sixth uh, item, sustaining engineering plan uh, for the first quarter of, oh, huh. I should change that. 2017, not 1017, darn it, I just copied it. All right, um, so, Really, the focus is going to be on U Portal 5. And this is me again, I think. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So uh, we've got a couple slides here related to U Portal 5. Uh, honestly, most of it is reminder content. I think it's uh, similar to. Uh, the content on U Portal 5 that was in the last briefing, and similar to the 
information about uPortal 5 that uh, has been in some of the other community calls and community hangouts that we've done over the last handful of months. Uh, these four bullet points, you know, kind of loosely describe the high-level uh, goals of uPortal 5. Um, you know, we want to update the the development paradigm for you know a, a more modern approach that does not involve building on on every web server. Uh, we want we want to have a U portal where uh, vast majority of adopters are deploying uh, binaries uh, on some level that have been built by the community rather than having everybody having to build them individually. Uh, we want to move uPortal firmly uh, toward the cloud. Uh, it, it seems very clear that uh, we need to be able to, you know, to work well in the cloud and deploy readily to the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, and, uh, you know, as ever, we are very interested in making uPortal easier to work with for developers and for new adopters. And we have, you know, several ideas uh, for that. So that URL at the bottom of this slide has, uh, that's a wiki page in, you know, the Aperio uPortal wiki. Uh, it contains these four points, but it contains a lot more information and sort of more detailed information about these efforts, uh, more specifics on what we mean as well as uh, kind of a step-by-step -step list of the way we, we sort of plan to attack it. So if you're interested, I encourage you to visit that. If you have any, uh, you know, suggestions, observations, uh, you know, corrections, please uh, post comments to that page and or start up, a, even better, start up a discussion on the uPortal dev list. Uh, can, you, can you hit the next slide, Benito? See what's on there. Uh, this content is kind of similar to the last slide. Uh, we are okay. So, in connection with preparing your portal five, uh, in connection with rethinking the way it is built and deployed, one of the things we're doing—you've heard this already—we're moving to a a Gradle-based build. And in conjunction with the Gradle-based build, we're actually we're going through the process of decomposing uh, the. I know it sounds lovely. It sounds like bodies in a field or something. But the uh, the word we have for this, I think, is decomposing, breaking U Portal uh, the, the U Portal Java sources down into a number of smaller modules uh, that are you know sort of thematically focused on a certain thing. There there will likely be one or more modules for groups one or more modules for, for layouts. There are already in there a few modules for soffits. Uh, this will help organizationally, but perhaps more importantly, it will help the Gradle build. It will help the uh, Gradle build system make uPortal builds very rapid in comparison with what we know. Uh, we probably will shave build times by more than half, I think, in this process. Uh, of uh, reorganizing you portal. Uh, another thing we're going to achieve uh, when we have reorganized all the source code, it will be quite a bit clearer to new adopters which files are are meant to be modified or configured, customized uh, by implementers, and which are sort of a part of the the JSIG sources. Uh, Aperio, I should say. Sorry. Uh, it will be a lot clearer which files you need to touch. They won't be just all mixed together. Several hundred thousand lines of, of source files all mixed together. Uh, let's see. Uh, some special notes. This is something I've been bringing up on the dev list. I'll bring it up here. I'll bring it up again. Uh, I am personally, and I think others, it sounds like this is going to be supported pretty broadly. Uh, I would like to remove as much uh, old, unnecessary code from uPortal as possible with the uPortal 5 release. 
And one of the reasons I would like to do, well, there are a number of reasons, but one of the reasons that I would like to do that actually relates to things like Spring 4. Uh, I think the, you know, tremendous volumes of, of source code that we have, uh, it, it, um, it, it makes it more likely that updating dependencies and maintaining, uh, you know, modernizing our approaches, it makes it more likely that we are, that we run into snags. So I think we will be, my screen is dimming, uh, I, I think we will be better off uh, <clears throat> sort of trimming, trimming the fat, uh, removing in particular unused code. I did some work on that last year uh, using a tool called UC Detector, trying to find code that isn't used. Uh, I, I want to remove uh, deprecated items, things like the old version, the legacy version of DLM. Uh, that may be gone already. The legacy version of PAGS, uh, you know, the non-database version of PAGS. Uh, there are, there's kind of a large number of deprecated items. Some of them can't really be removed because they are still very much active dependencies of, of non-deprecated code. But uh, perhaps if we look through item by item, we can find a way to, to modernize those things and, and, and even remove some of those, uh, modernize the clients of that. Uh, unpopular features, that's another one uh, I would potentially like to remove. Uh, so I'll be bringing up, it, it, these are just examples, they aren't things that are on my radar, I don't have like a target on the back of these items, but uh, a, a good example of something we could look at removing is opt-in fragments. I'm not sure if anybody's using opt-in fragments at this point. Uh, go ahead and put all your uh, comments saying, oh, we're using it, you know, I'm sure I'm going to get 16 of those right now. Uh, but user opt-in fragments, you know, there's a there's just a ton of technology in uPortal to support that. Another one is tab groups. I'm I, actually I think this one is a better example because uh, tab groups in in universality they allowed you to have kind of two, a hierarchy, two levels of hierarchy in your tabs. Uh, in Responder, we can do that by writing a custom uh, navigation component and just plugging it into the layout. Uh, in Responder, there's really sort of a better way to do that, uh, rather than hard coding this notion of tab groups. So I would be very keen uh, to identify, you know, how, however many hundreds of lines of code are necessary to support tab groups, uh, hierarchical tabs, which I believe, I'm not aware of anyone using it in uPortal Responder at all, uh, and just get that out of there. Uh, but every every item uh, that I attempt to remove, or any of us, I guess, attempt to remove, uh, will have a discussion on the dev list. Every item will also appear in a pull request for a period before it's removed. Uh, let's see, questions. I've never even heard of these. Yep, that's what I expected. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, a whole bunch of things that people aren't using and haven't heard of, I'd like to remove to make the, uh, make the code base more nimble. Hey, Drew, uh, I, have, I have a question for you that I think maybe the community would like an answer to as well. If the community wanted to participate in suggestions on what to remove, um, what's the best means of communicating that? At this point, probably on the list. Uh, in terms of just communicating, if you want to help removing it, feel free. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to go into uPortal 5, uh, you know, identify items that are deprecated. I, w I would say one pull request per component. I, I would probably rather not see a pull request with like 18 different deprecated components, uh, you know, removed because that would make them not very severable. Uh, but a pull request to remove uh, to remove the legacy PAGs, for example, that would be most welcome. If you get so ambitious, if you get that uh, level of ambition where you organize a pull request uh, like that, uh, I would encourage you to be very careful to find documentation and 
configuration files and supporting files that relate to that and also remove them so they don't get orphaned. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, discussion on the list, I think, is the way to go. Okay. And everybody that's on the call is familiar with the list, correct? I'm, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, more than likely. Okay. And then what one other means, if you're not familiar with how to submit um, communications via the list, would be through Zendesk um, as an S5 request. Um, and that goes for any sustained engineering efforts that you would like uh, Unicon to review. Um, you always have the ability via Zendesk to submit a request, again, via an S5 request ticket. All right, next item. Oh, oh yes. So, uh, I think we kind of covered this, but um, there had been uh, work on U Portal 5. I think you, we talked about it. You guys saw some of that in about the Q3 timeframe of last year. Uh, we, in Q4, we addressed the accessibility. I think that was like really the highlight and that's what we talked about. There, really, there wasn't the kind of progress on U Portal 5 that I would have most liked. Uh, and, that re and that's owing to kind of a, a larger load of project work than normal. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, in Q1 2017, we expect uh, a great deal more uPortal 5 work starting in the, you know, roughly February timeframe, maybe mid-February. Uh, and, uh, you know, Depending on what you know, what happens in terms of Spring Four and upgrading and so forth, and discussions within the community, uh, we have been looking, hoping for, looking for a uh, a, a release of UPortal Five to coincide with the uh, conference with Open Aperio, which is basically smack in the middle of the year. It's in June. Uh, I think that's it for this slide. Yep. All right, so uh, another th um, effort that we'll be doing in, in Q1 will be uh, really ramping up on the documentation. This was something that was brought up uh, at the last Open Aperio conference. It's something of value that kind of really needs some focus. Uh, UPortal itself has a, a great online manual. Um, it's mostly up to date. Uh, the only issue with the manual is that uh, people who have access to uh, making commitments, uh, well, anyone making pull requests, um, don't necessarily have the ability to update the documentation, and we'd like that to be more synchronized. Um, so a lot of projects have moved their documentation into their uh, source code repos, and we see real value in that, such that you know, a pull request comes in with an, uh, a fix or an enhancement, documentation could be included with that and merged right into the project. Um, so that's that's uh, potentially a, a big win for us. Um, I'll be I'll be tackling a big effort there on U portal. Um, in particular, uh, the portlets themselves are, are not in such a good place. Um, so lots of the documentation is outdated. Uh, new features have been uh, rolled into portlets without any uh, update to the documentation, and some of them uh, don't have any documentation at all, or it's very challenging to find. Uh, I kind of gave an example last briefing of one portlet that's had its documentation rolled into its repo, uh, so we'll continue with uh, those efforts this quarter. The hope is to get a good chunk of uh, uPortal done and a handful of the most popular portlets documentation rolled into their repos. Uh, kind of something we didn't highlight, um, but it's important to note for Q1 is we'll continue with accessibility. There are just uh, one or two current issues that are open, um, but as other issues come up and, and people start looking at uh, accessibility, we certainly uh, value that and continue um, 
keeping on top of, uh, of meeting those guidelines. Um, anything else on uh, Q1 team that we should mention? No, but Bruce does have a question. Um, besides the accessibility updates for 4.3.2, are there any other improvements? Yeah, I uh, put a response in, in the uh, chat. Uh, okay. Go ahead. You know. well, I was going to say, I, I don't have a, a list of those. I, I do know that uh, we've made um, at least one effort to go through uh, uPortal commits to uh, master over the last quarter to pick up as many um, uh, pull requests that were related to bug fixes to, to um, roll those into 432. We'll probably do that effort as well. Um, we, we certainly, we don't want to leave uh, 43 uh, hanging. We, we understand that a lot of people have based their, their current portal implementations off of that. So we, we, at the very least, want to make sure that bug fixes that we can, uh, that we find can be pushed into that branch. Anything else? And I guess that's part of uh, this last section, questions and answers. Um, any other questions about anything uh, covered in the briefing so far? Or today? Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it looks like we're running right on time here. Um, I would like to thank the Unicon team, Andy, Benito, Drew, and Christian, for putting this presentation together. And we are exploring ways to, to get this briefing out to you. Um, I am recording it. Um, we're in the process uh, of putting together a uPortal blog on the Unicon website. Um, if we don't get that up and running here within the next couple of weeks, or we'll make a decision on whether or not we can do that within the next couple of weeks, um, I'll be sending out a link to the recorded briefing via the, the current distribution list that we have that you guys all received the invite for this meeting to. Um, but if that's it, um, I guess we can go ahead and wrap this up. I appreciate everyone attending and I appreciate everyone's participation um, in the UPortal community. Um, we're looking forward to this quarter and this year, obviously with the advent and deployment of UPortal 5.0. This is going to be an exciting year for UPortal. And again, we appreciate everyone's input. Great. All righty. Great. Thanks, and everyone have a great day. We'll see you. All right. Bye-bye.